Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about LT Spice. Before we jump into the content, uh, you can see here that uh, something has changed, and that is uh, I'm no longer writing uh, the words and letters by pen. I've decided to uh, use text boxes to be able to uh, make the video format better and save time while uh, recording. Uh, so uh, you can see that as uh, the channel evolves, I'll uh, point, point these things out to you and uh, get your feedback in the comments. So let's talk about the content. So uh, we're going to be talking about an introduction to Spice, uh, the Spice engine. Uh, we're going to be talking about LT Spice basics. And we're going to do our quiz problems introduced in the previous uh, lecture, uh, in this lecture, and simulate them in LT Spice. Now, a uh, note here is that uh, I had to cut the lecture six into two parts because there was a time limit on a, in my recording program. Uh, so we'll be finishing the quiz problems in this video and uh, while learning how to use uh, LT Spice. So let's talk about uh, Spice and what it stands for. So Spice stands for a simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis, and its capabilities are nonlinear DC, nonlinear transient, and linear AC analysis. And we'll be discussing these as we go forward. I'm just giving you a high-level description in this lecture. Uh, now, what components could we uh, simulate in, in SPICE, the engine? Uh, we could simulate resistors, inductors, capacitors, independent voltage and current sources, and uh, a variety of different components that uh, most likely we're not going to get into in this lecture series. Uh, mainly, uh, the components we're going to look at are uh, resistors, inductors, capacitors, voltage sources, maybe switches. Um, uh, we may or may not touch on BJTs and MOSFETs based on how many lectures we have. I don't want to make too many lectures for this series. Uh, but certainly at some point, uh, we'll have to learn uh, about these components if we want to be uh, good engineers. Now, you might be asking yourself, why SPICE? Uh, why is it useful? Uh, why do we need to learn about it? So the first point here is that IC design differs from discrete design and prototyping. Uh, so uh, a couple of decades ago when you wanted to uh, design a particular analog circuit and you had resistors, capacitors, inductors, or uh, transistors and diodes as components. You would gather these together, place them on a breadboard, and probe around the various nodes to measure uh, voltages and use an ammeter, for example, to measure the current through a particular branch of the circuit. Uh, these days, though, it's not as simple anymore. Uh, you have very sophisticated uh, IC designs on semiconductor materials and you have to consider heat, dissip power dissipation, consider size issues, capacitances, parasitics, um, uh, and a variety of other factors. And basically, uh, you can't just uh, invest all that money into, for example, if you have a company, you pay your engineers, you have to pay for millions of dollars for devices. You can't just continue building ICs and just uh, using some very expensive test equipment to continuously measure them and uh, change the uh, design like that. That's very pro that cost will be prohibitive. So what the what the in industry does is uh, they use uh, powerful tools like SPICE and similar programs to uh, tweak the designs on the computer, uh, try to optimize them, optimize them, and once a uh, reasonable solution has been generated, they would go ahead and produce uh, a particular lot or a particular a sample size of those and go forward with that and uh, try to optimize it better in the physical world by uh, making some adjustments, tuning it and whatnot. We're not going to get into that here. But uh, the point here is that this program really does help us in terms of driving that cost and time and uh, labor uh, and, and so on and so forth. The second point is that it is an excellent tool for intuiting electronic circuit behavior. So as we go on and learn more uh, and this is key for our uh, lecture series, pretty much. Uh, this point was uh, for uh, your future, and if you get into IC design or circuit design, that's what matters for that purpose. But for our purpose, uh, point number two is very important. We want to be able to not only uh, perform circuit analysis on paper, but we want to be able to uh, check our homeworks, for example, check our problem sets, uh, get an idea of how this works, get practice for the real world. That's what we want to do here. Uh, and as we discussed in, uh, while talking about point number one, uh, this is a de facto industry standard. Either it's uh, SPICE itself or it's some sort of variance of it, variety of it, uh, P-SPICE, H-SPICE, LT-SPICE. Um, so that is another reason uh, why we'd be using SPICE, uh, the engine. 
Uh, number four is that it's available in the public domain. So for example, LT Spice, which is what we're going to be using, you could find that online. And I've shared that in one of the uh, one or more of the uh, video, des video descriptions uh, on my channel. So let's talk about a typical spice anatomy. So a spice source file consists of the following uh, structure. There are data statements which describe uh, components and their interconnections. For example, a resistor and how it's connected to uh, one or two nodes. Uh, a control statement which, which describe uh, to spice what type of analysis to perform on that particular uh, circuit. And output statements which specify what outputs shall be printed or plotted. So let's look at a very basic example here. Uh, so the net list is the, w the way that Spice actually uh, does what it does. So uh, in the old days when F Spice first came out of Berkeley, you probably need to write down, uh, so say we have a circuit here, it has a voltage source, uh, two resistors, and a bunch of nodes here. So the first thing is you'd want to specify where the, uh, where the ground uh, node is. This would be node 0 or 0 volts and uh, you would have uh, so node 0, 1 and 2 here I've labeled and uh, so how you would start is you would start with the circuit description in the net list and you would have the voltage source V1 is going to be here then we're going to have uh, the convention is that you're going to go from the positive the higher node to the lower node so node 1 has the higher potential uh, that's the positive node then you're going to have node 0 then you're going to have the value of that component, so in this case 10 volts. And we're not going to put in the um, unit here, it's going to ignore what's after this number. So then you're going to have resistor R1 and uh, you're going to specify its interconnection, so it's going to be from node 1 to node 2 and it's going to have a value of 10 ohms as you can see. Then lastly we have uh, R2 which is connected between nodes 2 and 0, so the higher node first again. And the lower node zero and you're gonna have 10 ohms for that as well and then we're gonna have spice directive so what kind of operation do we want to perform so in this case I'm gonna have a dot OP which is an operating point uh, you're getting introduced to this uh, idea without seeing transistors so it might not make sense what an operating point is but essentially the operating point is one of the simplest types of analysis it's a subsection of DC analysis and it concerns finding it's concerned with finding the uh, uh, voltages and currents through ver across various nodes and through various components. So, for example, um, if you have 10 volts here and you have 10 ohms and 10 ohms for two resistors in series here, you have what's called a voltage divider, and uh, you're going to have uh, because these resistors are the same value, you're going to have half of it, the voltage source be distributed across here. So you're going to have plus minus five volts here. So basically by performing the operating point al analysis, you're going to find the voltages everywhere. So you're going to see 10 volts here showing up here, 5 volts showing up here, and 0 volts here. And then you can use that to calculate the currents through various elements. And then we're going to have a dot end to specify that we're ending the uh, uh, circuit simulation essentially. Now do keep in mind though that SPICE itself when it came out in Berkeley, um, they had to use uh, net lists uh, and that was really the only option initially but people have developed uh, graphical user interfaces or GUIs and the program that we're going to be working with is not going to, we're not really going to be concerned with net lists as much although we may, I may pop in an example here and there just to uh, remind you that what's going on underneath the hood basically under the hood uh, but the, our primary goal is to learn how to perform circuit analysis and to uh, check our our designs or our uh, circuits that we're going to be analyzing. So really what we care about uh, in this lecture series is to first familiar, familiarize, that, familiarize ourselves with, uh, with these uh, software, simulation softwares, and also uh, just check our uh, solutions. So LT Spice is one variant of the Spice engine and it adds a graphical user interface to Spice, making it easier to visualize circuits. And that's what we're going to be using. Um, and let's real quick talk about DC analysis. Uh, there's other types of analysis such as transient, AC, uh, etc. Uh, but we're going to only be talking about DC analysis for a while uh, since we want to get familiarized with that and that's what suffices for now. Uh, so DC analysis determines the DC operating point of circuit. So uh, this might not make sense right now but it treats inductors as shorts, short circuits, and capacitors as open. 
We're going to discuss that later when we get to that uh, chapter. Uh, it invoked, it can be invoked via the .dc, .op, and .tf commands. Again, that's something that uh, I'm only introducing right now. We're going to talk about later. And it's going to be performed before other forms of analysis. For example, transient or AC small signal. So when you click on AC small signal or transient analysis, it's going to have to do the operating point analysis first before you can move on to performing your desired analysis. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about LT Spice basics. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, discuss a problem that we're going to use as an example, as a case study to uh, learn about LT Spice. I personally like to learn through examples, so uh, before we do that, let's first set up the problem. Um, this is the same problem that I showed you in the netless example, but since we haven't talked about uh, voltage dividers in a formal way yet, I'll just go ahead and derive it really quickly. Uh, so let's just go ahead and... Uh, so the question is asking us to find V out, uh, output voltage in the circuit below, and check the answer using LT spice. So let's do part one, which is to find V out, an expression for V out in terms of V1 and R1 and R2. Let's just go ahead and assign um, various uh, signs here. So I'm going to say that uh, V1 is applied here, so there's going to be a voltage drop from this side to this side of uh, R1, and also for R2 it's going to be from this side, top to bottom here. That's the voltage drops across these uh, resistors, which should sum up to V1. Let's go ahead and do a KV, KVL here and call this I. So that's the current flowing from the source going through this loop. And using KVL then, you can find that uh, negative V1, I'll just go ahead and not use color, so negative V1 plus, uh, it's going, for, uh, the current's looping through uh, plus to minus, so that's a positive, a current to passive sign convention. That's going to be a positive sign uh, I times R1. Again, it's going to go clockwise and uh, see the positive sign first, so uh, I R2 is going to be my next term and then I'm going to set that to zero because it's KVL sum of all the voltage rises and drops should equal to zero now let's go ahead and solve this in terms of I so I'm going to move V1 to the other side I'm going to factor I out uh, simultaneously so I'm going to have I then I'm going to factor that out and get R1 plus R2 and I'm going to solve in terms of I so I'm going to uh, divide both sides by R1 plus R2 and I'm going to get V1 is uh, I is equal to V1 over R one plus R2. Now keep in mind this is just the current through this entire circuit but I want to find V out which is the voltage and recall that um, uh, if I probe here from plus to minus the voltage V out here is the current through R2 times the resistance R2 so I'm going to get that V out is equal to um, V1 over R1 plus R2 times R2 so V1 R2 over R1 plus R2 and that's what I mean by the voltage divider it's a very common circuit you should know uh, although we're going to talk about it uh, in the next couple of lectures it's good to just get a preview now since you're going to see this a lot in your future endeavors and in the homeworks and exams uh, it's a very fundamental concept so now with the parameters that we saw before let's just go ahead and plug those in the uh, voltage V1 was 10 volts R1 and R2 are the same and there were 10 ohms just to make things simple make the only concept that you learned the actual circuits and LT spice and not the math so let's just say that's 10 ohms now what I'm going to get then is 10 volts times the ratio 10 over 10 plus 10 which is 1 half so 10 over 20 is 1 half that's 1 half and that's equal to 5 volts so the output voltage is 5 volts and the general rule of thumb is that for a given circuit uh, for a given voltage divider and sorry, it's not a rule of thumb, it's just a truism, it's a fact that if the resistors are the same value, uh, the output voltage is half the input voltage, as you can imagine. Whatever R2 and R1 is, if I say R is equal to uh, R1 equals R2, let's just make a new variable, then if I plug in, plug in uh, V out equals uh, V1 R over R plus R2, that's just 2R, and you're going to always get that uh, it's V1 over 2. So as long as these are the same value, you're going to have the same uh, a voltage drop of uh, half a voltage drop for uh, the input across the output. So with that being said, let's jump to LT spice then and begin looking around here. Let's see, I got to fit the screen onto here. 
Okay, so what you see here is a typical program. So you have a file uh, menu, a drop down menu. You have uh, edit. You can do various things here. Uh, hierarchy. We're not going to worry about symbols yet. We're not going to create any symbols anytime soon for this lecture series. You're going to see spice netlist and spice error log and tr visible traces. We're going to look at these uh, at some point. Simulate. You're going to click on run usually when we're going to. Uh, do our uh, simulations. We're not going to worry about efficiency yet. Uh, tools, uh, export netlist is something we may use. Um, uh, window, we can adjust the windows here and help. You can look at the uh, LT Spice help logs and all, all those things. But to simplify things, uh, one second here, I gotta fix this problem. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create the circuit. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into the uh, components section and, and uh, look up voltage look up voltage and then click on voltage here place it click and press escape then I'm going to uh, put down two resistors by from this menu from this option I'm going to press control R to rotate and place it in a nice manner then I'm going to click again first control R and click again in this location I'm going to press escape go on here and click wire that's going to be that's going to allow me to draw wires. I'm going to connect connect these nodes, and once you click uh, from one uh, terminal to the other, it's going to terminate the wire. So you create a new one from this terminal to here to here, then another one from here to here, here and there. Now let's go ahead and do something here. Let's go ahead and label the nodes. Let me just teach you this from uh, from the get go because it's going to simplify things when we have a larger circuit. It's good to um, label things, label nodes. So let's just press escape, go on this option here, label net. Then I'm gonna write down node 1, say OK, and press this node as we showed in the uh, netlist example. I'm gonna also click here and call that node, let me press escape and right click on here, call that node 2, or it could also be V out, that's fine. Then I'm gonna label this other node down here as label, uh, as a um, net zero on here let's go here net zero and that's going to automatically call that ground so i'm going to put that there click on wire and connect that node so now uh that and that's a very important uh, important um note there is that you have to always have a ground reference point when you're trying to simulate circuits in SPICE and specifically LT SPICE. So let's now go ahead and uh, give some values to these components. So right click on them and say DC value of 10 volts. Right click on here, say 10 ohms. And it's going to auto automatically be in 10 ohms. We're not going to worry about all these other things yet. It's just very simple. We're going to begin very simply with 10 ohms. Then I'm going to go to, uh, let's go ahead and look at the net list before we do anything else. So in the netlist, you can see, uh, as I showed you an example uh, about netlists, uh, we have uh, the source V1 and uh, uh, positive connected node uh, 1 and 0, then the value 10. Then for R1, we have the next node 2, uh, and then uh, the first one 1 and the value 10 ohms. Then for R2, you have uh, the other node is 0, then uh, the, the other connection is 2 here, the value is 10. Then you have a dot op. These are the so that's the circuit description, and these three are the uh, directives. And uh, dot op and dot end are what we saw before. But the dot the dot back anno is the uh, is an option for annotation for being able to look at the current going into a pin, which at this moment we're not going to worry about. So now that we saw the example of a netlist, we're going to go ahead and go into either simulate run or just click on run here. And uh, I'd already placed a directive here. Let me go ahead and see if I can find it here. It's not placed down here, but I already placed a directive of dot op, and it's showing me the results here, um, which I see that uh, the voltage at this node with respect to ground is 10 volts. The voltage at node 2 with respect to ground is 5 volts, which is what is expected. It is half of the source given that these are equivalent resistors. And the current uh, going through R2 is uh, negative 
0.5 amps or 500 milliamps and the direction is a uh, is because uh, although the on paper the current's going to flow this way the way that uh, netlets are generated they always go to the the positive um, um, terminal or the or the or the last terminal and then they're going to list the first one so we saw for r1 for example it was uh, r1 2 1 10 so it's looking at the other terminal so it's, when it's calculating the current through it's going to be the opposite direction of the uh, the clockwise current flowing through here which we know should be the case because we have a high potential here and lower potential here and these are just passive elements so it should be a standard current flowing clockwise so that is the reason that we're seeing a negative number here uh, it is just the fact that the net list is generated um, in the manner that it is uh, listing the other node first and then the first node you, you're uh, originating from okay so for the quiz we begin with a classic problem that you're bound to encounter at some point during your uh, circuit analysis course uh, so in this problem, we're asked to find this unknown voltage Vx in the middle, middle of the circuit here. Uh, I'll just, my only hint here would be just to make sure you stick with the rules that we've learned and uh, just follow through from there without panicking. Problem two, we have a uh, question asks us find V1, V2, and V3 in the circuit below. Uh, my hint here would be to, uh, again, follow the rules that we've learned and try to first simplify the circuit as much as you can in terms of architecture and uh, the way it's represented before you begin solving it. Now in problem three, we're asked to find, uh, again, an unknown voltage Vx in the circuit when the current is defined as uh, shown here. Okay, so I'll let you give it a try and box the final answer as best as you can. And I will begin with problem one. So we're going to find the voltage Vx. So I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing one big loop in the circuit so I'm going to use KVL and I'm going to use since I don't have space to draw it here I'm going to do it from the outside so my direction is in this uh, in this way and I'm going to call it I lowercase I and write KVL equation 1 so I'm again going to start from the very bottom here as I usually do from the source and I'm going to say uh, go clockwise and see what I encounter. So now before we do that, uh, note that because I've called the vo the current, I've defined it to be clockwise, I'm going to label things as if it really is clockwise. So I'm going to say uh, for it to be clockwise, then the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor is going to be in this manner, plus and minus in this fashion to follow passive sign convention. And similarly for the 30 ohm resistor, I'm going to have the same sign. And that's, I'm, I'm making an assumption. I'm assuming that the current's flowing in this uh, counter uh, or clockwise direction. And we'll see if I'm uh, correct, if I get a minus or a plus. So I'm going to write my KVL. So I'm going to start from the down here and say, okay, go up and see minus 50. And I'm not going to color that red. I'm just going to quickly go through minus 50. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see a, a voltage drop here that should be by Ohm's law 10 times the current. So plus 10 Ohm's times I. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see, and don't confuse this plus, that's a whole different story. Uh, look at this guy. I'm going to see a plus, that's going to be a plus 30 ohms times I. I'm going to keep going, I'm going to see a plus 30 volts, plus 30 volts, all that equal to zero. Uh, so let's go ahead and solve this guy. So I'm going to cancel the 30 and minus 50 and get a negative 20. But I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. Then I'm going to have 20 volts is equal to 10 ohm times uh, I plus 30 ohm times I, so that's 40 ohms times I. And I'm going to get, I'm going to divide by 40, divide by 40, and I'm going to get I is equal to 1 half or 500 milliamps. 1 half amps or 500 milliamps. And uh, I'm going to circle that even though it's not the final answer. Uh, then I'm going to look at my circuit uh, and look at Vx. Vx is uh, when I use the probe to measure, uh, put the plus here, put the minus here, the minus end and measure here. I'm going to see that it's going to be a, from the bottom here. It's going to be, I'm going to be going up and I'm going to think, okay, from ground of my probe, from the pro uh, ground of my probe, I'm going to go up and get a 30 volt voltage rise. But then 
and again, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see a, uh, uh, whatever this voltage is here, a rise here because I'm going minus plus, minus plus. So I'm rising twice with different amounts. And uh, do note that I have a positive current, so my assumption was correct. And the voltage drops are indeed in the manner that I've shown and the current direction is clockwise. So given that, I'm going to go ahead and say Vx is equal to, uh, I'm going to start here, go up 30 volts, and then go another, up another um, 30 ohms times I, which is, I, uh, let's say, 0.5 amps. That's going to be 30 times 0.5, which is 15. So 15 volts equals 45 volts. So Vx is equal to 45 volts. And let me circle this guy, or box this guy. And now we have to make sure that... Uh, we check on the other side and make sure that there's no conflict here. So I'm gonna look this way and say, okay, let me start at the ground, start at the bottom, at the at the reference node, go up, and I'm gonna see a rise of 50 volts, and uh, keep going. I'm gonna see a drop because I'm going first from minus plus, then plus to minus. So I'm gonna see a drop here. Therefore, I'm gonna have a Vx is equal to going up 50 volts, dropping by 10 times i. So I'm gonna have 50 volts plus or minus because I'm going to drop whatever that voltage is. So plus or minus is going to be a drop, so that's going to be a 10 ohm times uh, 0.5 amps, so 0.5. That's going to give me uh, 10 times 0.5 is 5, so 50 volts minus 5 volts is 45 volts. And we are indeed getting the correct answer, which is shown here, so that's correct. So really quickly here, just to verify, we could have also said with KCL, I used KCL, I could have said, okay, um, let's use Ohm's law from this node, this point to this point. So I'm gonna say the current again, I'm gonna assume it's going clockwise and say 50 volts minus Vx over uh, 10 ohms. This current then, that's the current. So this voltage minus this voltage over the resistance, that's the using Ohm's law, that's gonna give me the current I. That's equal to I, which is equal to uh, Vx minus 30 volts, Vx minus 30 volts over uh, 30 ohms. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the uh, 10 from here and uh, here and get a 3 on this side. And I'm going to multiply 3 on both sides and get 150 volts minus 3Vx is equal to uh, Vx minus 30 volts. Then I'm going to add it to the other side and get 180. And add 3Vx to the other side and get 4Vx. And once I do the division here, I'm going to get uh, 180 divided by 4. should be actually, uh, uh, we should know the answer from trigonometry because of angles. Um, that should be 45 volts. So... Okay, so for the first quiz problem, I've gone ahead and uh, drawn the circuit out just to save us time. Uh, there's no more new skills that uh, I haven't shown you in the uh, first example. I think the only things to keep in mind are what these uh, figures do here. If you need to move anything, you can use uh, these hands here. And um, these are really just things you can figure out on your own by uh, fiddling around with the program. So I'm not going to spend any more time on those things. So uh, you've already seen the naming. I've named this node. Uh, Vx as in the problem. Now I'm just going to go ahead and show you this since the first one didn't uh, allow me to. I'm going to click on simulate run and I'm going to go to DC operating point at the end here and click OK. And that's going to calculate the values for me. So let me just move this here. And we're going to see here that uh, VN1, I haven't labeled this node, but it's node 1 here. It is 50 volts as expected with respect to ground. Uh, node Vx, which is what we care about, is 45 as we calculated. Uh, node 2 here is 30 volts as expected with respect to ground. And the current is again negative because of the reason I told you earlier, the way it's uh, defined in the net list. It goes from the, uh, the second node to the first node. So therefore we have a negative current, uh, but the magnitude is 500 milliamps as calculated. 
And uh, with that being said, then this confirms our calculations for the first quiz problem. So in this problem, we're asked to find the voltages of V1 through V3. Before we do anything though, let's try to simplify things. So I know here that I could uh, draw the equivalent circuit in a more nice fashion and um, move this node over and uh, make it more rectangular looking circuit. So I've done, uh, to save time, I've already done this in the circuit below. You can verify yourself uh, by pausing the video that these are actually the same circuits. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, label my currents. I'm going to call this one, two, for every for every uh, loop, I'm going to go ahead and do its own equation. So K VL now. For one, I'm going to start at the bottom again and go up and see minus 10. That's a minus 10 plus, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see a plus V3. I'm going to go down again clockwise and see a minus V2. All of that is equal to zero. Equation two, I'm going to start down here and see a plus V2 as I go clockwise. That's a V2 and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see a plus V1. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see a plus 15. All of that is equal to zero. Then I'm going to go to loop three and start again at the bottom and go up and see a minus V1 plus because I keep going clockwise and I see a plus sign and I see a 20 volts. That gives me that. And just for practice, I'm going to have a fourth loop here. Now keep in mind that we have uh, uh, three unknowns, so really three equations would uh, uh, be enough, but I'm going to just for practice show us uh, what's going to go on here so i'm going to start at the bottom here and see a negative 10 again uh, go up and see a plus uh, v3 uh, i'm going to keep going keep going keep going i'm going to see this this is a larger loop so i'm going to see a plus 20 plus 20 keep going down here and i'm going to see a plus 15 all of that is equal to zero so now let's go ahead and solve from the first equation so the first equation what is that going to tell us uh, all that's doing is saying V3 minus V2 is equal to 10. Uh, the second equation is telling us that V2 plus V1 is equal to minus 15. The third one is telling us a useful result, which is that V1, if I take it to the other side, is, uh, is going to give me that V1 is equal to 20. And the fourth one, although we don't really need it, uh, it's going to tell us that if I take uh, 10 from this guy, I'm going to get a 10 from from 20, I'm going to get a 10 if I take 10 away. And I'm going to get that V3. Uh, let's see here. V3 is equal to... Um, let's see. V3 is equal to minus... Uh, sorry, I was uh, distracted by something else. So it's going to be a minus 25 volts. Um, now, we found V3, so let me circle that or box that. Then I have uh, the relationship up here, which I already found out, so let me box that to V1. And also that, um, let's see, we have V1, and we could find it using this equation what V2 is. Uh, V2 is going to be minus 15 uh, minus V1, which is 20 volts. So V2 is going to be negative, um, negative 35. So V2 is negative 35 volts. And we do have another equation up here. Let me start, uh, box that and then go up here. We do have this equation up here which relates V2 and V3. Let's double check. So V3 uh, is 10 plus V2, which is 10 plus V2 was negative 35. That gives me a negative 25. And V3 was indeed negative 25. So we're good there. Okay, in this problem, I've also gone ahead and uh, drawn the circuit out uh, to save time. So let's go ahead and um, simulate this. But but before that, let me just indicate that uh, I have chosen the ground reference node to be this node, but it could really be any node. And uh, you just have to be uh, cognizant of where um, the direction of the V drops, uh, the voltage drops across each component. And you'll just have to shift things around, shift the voltage values around. Uh, and really that's the only uh, downside to this. But we do have to uh, make sure it's not ambiguous and we have to put a ground note somewhere. But let's go ahead and uh, 
simulate this and compare our results so for for the first for r1 here we found that the voltage drop from the top side to the bottom side so plus uh, to minus is 20 volts so now let's verify that's node 2 and this is the node this node is 15 volts because ground is here so I didn't label it with a name so it's going to be uh, whatever this voltage is here minus 15 volts so let's look at node 2 that's 35 minus 15 that's 20 and that is indeed 20 as we found in the problem set by calculation now let's go ahead and look at R2's voltage drop so that is going to be VX minus 0 which is ground but the way we defined it is uh, that the plus sign is here in the bottom and the minus sign is up here so we'll actually have to do uh, ground or 0 minus VX because it's for the higher potential to the lower potential and that's going to give us um, negative 35 volts let's verify that that ground minus VX is negative 35 so ground is 0 minus uh, VX which is uh, let's see I think something oh I think I double named it so it really should have just been VX but I called it V2 so now VX is replaced by V2 that is 35 so 0 minus 35 is negative 35 as indeed is the case based on our calculations and lastly let's look at R3 the voltage drop there is defined as uh, plus being on the left and minus being on the right that's the convention we follow so it's going to be a node 1 minus node 2 and that should give us negative 25 volts let's look at node 1 10 minus node 2 which is 10 minus 35 which gives us negative 25 and indeed that is the answer so find Vx in the circuit below um, again we're going to do the same thing as uh, the first problem and I'm gonna write a KVL this node and actually it's red but uh, that's fine let me go over this and call this i because i is shown here on the side uh, with that direction so i'm going to start at the bottom and say kvl first equation i'm going to say minus 40 i'm going to keep going up keep going up and since i imposed that direction of current i'm going to also uh, label these uh, polarities here to follow passive sign convention i'm going to say plus 5 times i plus 5i I want to keep going I'm going to say negative 6 keep going I'm going to see clockwise see a plus 10i keep going clockwise and I'm going to say plus 16 and set all that equal to 0 and and uh, simplify I'm going to have a negative 46 here plus a 16 which is uh, let's see negative 30 then I have a 5i and a 10i so that's 15i equal to 0 that's a negative 30 plus 15i equal to 0 which means that uh, 30 is equal to 15i and i is equal to 2 amps that's the first result let me write that more neatly i is equal to um, 2 amps as we said that's not the final answer but we're going to box that and that tells us that the current's going in the clockwise direction as we predicted and what we're going to do next is find Vx so looking at uh, the right side if you look at this side uh, we're going to see that we're going to, have to start at the bottom at the reference node and go up and get a rise of 16 volts and then get a rise of whatever this voltage is which is 10 times i so Vx would then be um, uh, 16 volts plus 10 times i and i is 2 so I'm going to get 20 plus uh, 16 which is 36 volts now on the other side I'm going to say so let's call this 1 let's call this 2 side 1 told us that let's see what side 2 tells us I'm going to start at the bottom go up and I'm going to get a rise of 40 volts I'm going to drop uh, whatever this voltage is 5i because I'm going from plus to minus so initially I went from minus to plus so I rose then I'm going to have a drop here from plus to minus then I'm going to have a rise again because I'm going from minus to plus of 6 volts so I'm going to say that Vx is equal to uh, let's see 40 volt rise plus a 5i and i, I is 2 so that's 10 volts well oh, that should be a minus I'm sorry that should be a minus 
I have a drop here of minus 10 and I'm going to get a rise of 6 so that gives me 30 plus 6 is 36 okay so let's go ahead and look at our final circuit problem and simulate it so I'm going to go and uh, click on run and let's look at uh, what VX is with respect to ground and VX is 36 volts as expected and the current uh, through all these different uh, components and resistors are two, uh, two amps and therefore we, we were correct in our calculations. I hope that this uh, video has uh, served you well in terms of uh, acquainting you with uh, LT Spice and I hope uh, you'll use um, uh, you'll be able to do more problems by, uh, by yourself and uh, learn more about LT Spice. I'll see you guys in the next video.